All right, well, welcome to another Deerbug uh, meeting, and thanks for all for coming. And it's my pleasure today to introduce the first of our two speakers, uh, Dr. Yu Lu, or Sunny Lu, uh, coming from uh, the, uh, the Lunenfeld, uh, Lunenfeld Tannenbaum Research Institute, where he's been working with uh, Jeff Rana's group uh, as uh, to do his uh, PhD thesis and a little finishing up, but now he's about to move on to bigger and better things, uh, choosing among a few options, but I can't uh, reveal which one yet. Um, but uh, anyway, his uh, background, he'll tell us about some of his work in, in <coughs> development and, and, and disease and evolution, I guess. Um, uh, but he did a master's in biochemistry at Queens before that, and in biochemistry, and a bachelor's in uh, at Xiamen University, if I'm pronouncing that right, probably not. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and so, without further ado, uh, he's going to tell us about uh, his work with Jeff Rana. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for offering this uh, uh, opportunity to uh, introduce our work. So, the, the title for my presentation today is a translation of our medicine. Uh, uh, that's the key to the procedure uh, medicine. So, uh, <coughs> thanks to the NGS technology, so everybody probably already heard the exciting revolution for the traditional medicine, and the, uh, we are in the revolution phase from the one size phase all to the uh, precision uh, medicine. So, in this transition, so it is more challenging and also missions for the. Uh, clinicians, diaphragmaticians, uh, uh, and biologists. Uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, functional nodes, uh, people have uh, different uh, missions and also challenges. And then, <coughs> and then uh, people uh, have to communicate uh, uh, more communications between among all these peoples. And then you can see that uh, there's a key uh, functional rules for biophoromaticians. Uh, uh, because uh, bi uh, not is our bioinformaticians uh, bio uh, <coughs> have to handle clinical big data and the biological big data all at the same time, and also the challenging is how to integrate the, all these data and uh, deliver <coughs> the information for the clinical use. So uh, basically, the, the data could be the different layers, uh, including cl <coughs> clinical information and the signs and uh, uh, symptoms, and also health and, uh, health and uh, clinical information. Uh, other is the biological uh, information. Uh, I think everyone here is very familiar with uh, uh, information for, uh, from the genome, epigenome, interactome, and transcriptome. So I will share some experience uh, 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 from the past uh, two, uh, two or three years uh, uh, <coughs> from my study in Dr. Shiranda <coughs> lab. So uh, in the first challenge for us is uh, uh, what kind of uh, clinical materials for our analysis. So <coughs> in my studies, I have used the archival blood cancer samples. So uh, uh, for short, people always call this FFPE blocks. So FFPE blocks, uh, in briefly, is uh, the tumor removed from the patients and fixed, uh, and prepare FFPE blocks. And then the FFPE sections can be prepared. And, <coughs> and then all, uh, the advantage of FFPE uh, samples is they are easy to access and intensively used worldwide. And also, there are uh, full, uh, complete uh, clinical records are available. And uh, since uh, the FLP sections will be reviewed by pathologists, so <coughs> the, the viable uh, tumor, um, tumor regions can be uh, determined, and then it can avoid uh, interference from uh, adjacent uh, tissues. However, the FFP uh, samples are very challenging for the molecular profiling, for example, like RNA sequencing. The reason is uh, uh, during the fixation process and storage, the RNA degraded, and also the, uh, there's a lot of chemical modification of uh, RNA base, and also cross-link uh, RNA, DNA, and the protein. So this uh, challenge is uh, <coughs> restrict the uh, uh, wider application of FFP in RNA sequencing analysis. So uh, why I mention R sequencing? R sequencing is a powerful uh, tool that I think uh, most people are familiar with R sequencing used for the transcriptome study. So basically, the mature RNA 
uh, reverse transcript to the CD libraries and uh, for the next generation sequencing. And a lot of uh, uh, bioinformatics pipelines have been developed to use the R sequencing data to study the transcriptomes. And uh, <coughs> uh, I think uh, many people are familiar with this. Uh, through uh, uh, counting the mapped reads to different genes, people can um, <coughs> Characterize the expression profiles, and also through mapping, uh, through characterizing the reads map to different axons, people can identify the alternative splicing events and transcript uh, isoforms. And R sequencing is a sequence technology, so you can track the, the uh, mutation information and also gene fusion uh, information, and also the R sequencing uh, can be used for non-coding profiles, uh, including link RNA, enhanced RNA, and macro RNA. So in our study, we choose the uh, analyze the transcriptome of blood cancer. Why we choose the uh, blood cancer? Because it is number five of common cancer, and. Uh, uh, it is the most expensive management per patient, and also the treatment of blood cancer is challenge, uh, challenges the life quality of uh, uh, blood cancer patient a lot. Uh, basically, blood cancer can be grouped into high grade or low grade blood cancer based on the cancer cell morpho morph uh, morphology. And uh, in gen uh, some people think uh, these two grades of blood cancer are two diseases based on their uh, genetics. Uh, uh, Information low grade blood cancer always associated with FGFR3 mutation, high grade blood cancer associated with the TP53 mutations. So, uh, uh, even there's so many difficulties and challenges, uh, so uh, I try to establish the uh, whole RNA sequencing pipelines uh, using this FFP blood cancer samples. Uh, this is a quick summary about uh, this pipeline. So basically, the FFP uh, <coughs> samples are prepared from the tumor removed from blood cancer patients. So pathology marked the uh, tumor regions, and the RNA extracted from these regions uh, for our whole RNA seq analysis. And then we use a lot of uh, bioinformatics tools and method to analyze the, the, the data. Uh, so this is uh, different from the method I introduced uh, uh, in previous slides because uh, 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 as I told you, the FFP, in FFP samples, the RNA is highly degraded, so we cannot use the oligo-TT based messenger RNA <coughs> sequence method. So we, use the, uh, we, we collect all the uh, RNA molecules, including premature RNA and mature messenger RNA. That means that we collect all the reads, including intron reads and uh, exon reads. So in the cohort, we have six, uh, 60 FFP blocks in total, 49 unique and 11 replicates. And this includes both high-grade and low-grade blood cancer tumors. And uh, <coughs> basically, most people use fresh frozen samples for molecular profiling studies. So first thing we observe the high, con high concordance of transtome profiles between fresh frozen and FFP samples indicating that FFP samples can reflect the expression profile from a fresh frozen. <coughs> so uh, this is uh, the quality, uh, quality control. We uh, have the FFP uh, sections from the same block, different sections from the same block and also the different block from the same patient. So here shows the uh, highly uh, correlated, uh, uh, highly correlated about the coding, uh, coding genes and non-coding genes, uh, indicating the uh, the highly uh, producible and re reliable, uh, reliable of uh, this uh, technology. And also, uh, we expanded to the eleven uh, technique uh, replicate, and it shows that uh, the it's, uh, coding, uh, coding uh, whole coding expression uh, fields are highly correlated to each other, and also the same with the link RA. Uh, link eye expression profiles. And this, uh, this is independent about the blood cancer grades. So uh, blood cancer uh, uh, also can be uh, grouped uh, to different stage based on the, uh, how much about the blood cancer cells invade to the muscle layers. So this is T1, T2, T3, uh, T3 T4. So the higher number, the, the more uh, invasion of the blood cancer uh, cells. And uh, here we try to integrate, uh, we try to compare the, the coding expression correlation of the samples and also how they associate with the, the pathology index, uh, uh, like the grade and the stage. Here we can show that the cluster shows the three uh, major uh, 
a cluster based on the grid information. Why is a high grid cluster and the low grid cluster and the boundary with the mix of high grid and low grid samples? And also, uh, the, the stage, uh, stage information also highly associated with the coding uh, expression profile. So this indicates we have the highly, uh, high quality of uh, uh, expression data from this FFP samples. So but the challenge is uh, how, we to, uh, how we use this method uh, for the clinical applications. Uh, and we have observed that the highly associated with the clinical index, uh, like a grid and a stage. And, uh, <coughs> and the question is uh, how could we integrate this uh, uh, coding uh, profiles uh, to, uh, for use for clinician use like a diagnosis or the prognosis or, tr uh, or treatment predictions for the patient. So there's a, uh, there's a method uh, divided, uh, developed in Jeffrey lab uh, called the Dynamo. So this method uh, integrated the protein-protein interaction network uh, with the expression profiles uh, <coughs> and it can be used to predict uh, the blood cancer grid. So basically the Dynamo is an integrated expression uh, profile with uh, inter protein interaction uh, network. Uh, so they try to find the Dynamo, uh, the software try to find the Dynamo hubs. So this uh, indicated the principle for this software work. So for example, YY, uh, YYY is a transcription factor and it could suppress or active gene expression, but their expression has no change between low grade and uh, uh, high grade blood cancer. However, the co uh, the expression correlation between YYY and with its uh, interacting pattern dramatically change between high grade and low grade. <coughs> for, for example, the YYY's interaction with the BRAC1 is uh, uh, positive in low grade. However, uh, this correlation change to uh, negative in high grade. And uh, through find this Dynamo uh, hubs, uh, so we can, we can provide the information for both the biological scientists and the clinicians. For example, from, a, a, my, uh, from a my studies, we identified uh, uh, 393 Dynamo hubs. And the interesting thing, all these hubs form a functional cluster indicating that uh, expression per difference between high grade and low grade functional affect the protein-protein interaction network. So this function including cells, uh, cell signaling, protease, uh, transcription factor, cell cycle, and cell, cell skeleton. And the, uh, this method can also be used for, uh, for prediction of uh, uh, blood cancer uh, uh, grid. So we use this, uh, <coughs> and we use this method to try to predict the, the, the grid information, and the, we get the rock curve, the cross-validation result shows uh, uh, very good results. But this is uh, just a single mission, just to predict the uh, blood cancer uh, grid. So if you want to more more difficult, uh, sorry, more complicated uh, uh, clinical use, the like uh, uh, treat, uh, predict uh, the outcome of uh, of the treatment of some drugs to the uh, cancer patient, you probably need to integrate more information. So the <coughs> so the, this could be including protein protein interaction network, epigenetics uh, uh, profiles. Uh, all this uh, labeled red is. Uh, is a public available database, and the, also you can get the information from the RNA sequencing results like link RNA, ERA profiles, SMV spectrum, splicing signature, and also macro uh, bio, uh, biop. And then integrate this information with the coding uh, expression profiles that can help to improve the diagnosis and the prognosis, and also can predict the uh, management of the patient and also may answer some other clinical requests. So, <coughs> so uh, I try to integrate all this information to have an overview of uh, how the transcriptome is rewired between these two, uh, two diseases. This, uh, this shows the summary about, uh, about uh, the uh, analysis, uh, integrate uh, all, the, all the information we, uh, we get, including both the RNA and the ERA and the mutations. This shows that there is a more morphogenic uh, signaling switch between these two uh, diseases. And then this, uh, <coughs> this analysis can be used for the biologist to identify the drug targets or mechanisms. However, it will be challenging to use this uh, integrated information for the 
uh, <coughs> clinical use. So that will uh, need the integrated the information from the expression profile and the mutation and the network analysis with the clinical and the health records. And, the, and also the challenge is how to deliver this information and the integrated analysis for the cancer diagnosis. And uh, we are still working on, uh, on, the, on the algorithm the integrated information for the uh, cancer diagnosis purpose. So uh, I try to uh, finish uh, on time. So uh, this is the acknowledgement. So this is uh, people I, I appreciate their help from the lab and also the team for the transformed studies of the blood cancer. Thank you very much. Great, so maybe we can do a few questions while uh, Benjamin sets up here, and, and maybe I can uh, start with uh, a, a dumb question and maybe a, a better question, I don't know. I, I, I've never heard of eRNA. What's, what's that? ERA is an enhanced RNA. So recently, uh, if you're familiar with the ENCODE project, uh, so the enhancer, uh, enhancer has uh, people find the polymer RNA polymer with two always blending to the enhancer area to generate some transcripts. So based on the transcripts uh, transcription directions, uh, people call it one degree ERA, two degree ERA. And also some people argue that this is the transcription leaks, uh, but other people argue they maybe have some functions. So. Uh, that's but these things thing. correlate with enhancer activity. Uh, that's yeah, some people say that, and also some people think uh, some reports say that it is uh, uh, related to the chromatine 3D interaction. Okay, uh, maybe another one. Can I ask one, one more? So, uh, sure, sure. in this Dynamo method, the YY1 example was really nice because it was the same expression level in both of your grades yes. of cancer. Yes. Yeah. And so, so then my worry doesn't doesn't happen. But are there other other cases where your hub gene is changing an expression level, you'll get changes in the correlation uh, with, this with, 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 its, with its partners just that are, you know, it's noisy as the expression level gets average lower. Uh, yeah, so basically that, uh, that is, uh, has a uh, uh, statistic uh, cut off. So uh, compared to the, 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 the correlation expression, that, that could so happen. So somehow that's taken also, into uh, yeah, yeah, some, uh, uh, something will take uh, count. Uh, in the, uh, software uh, for the analysis. All right, is there any other questions uh, from the group? So how did you manage to transform your model into a classifier? I don't really, I didn't really understand the work here about how you made how so, you made uh, the prediction. So the method they call the uh, propaganda clustering. And also they use, uh, so basically based on the cluster, because I'm not the uh, inventor for the dynamo. So uh, I basically know the principle. So they uh, use the cluster based on the hybrid and the low grade. So they have a training set. And then, uh, and then leave something for prediction. And also they have a cross, uh, uh, leave one cross uh, validation process to calculate the law. Okay? Thank you again.